All right, let's talk about batteries. Different battery chemistries and specifically how much of their capacity you can actually use without causing damage to the battery. We will be covering three different battery chemistries or battery chemistry families, if you will. Technically two, but we will get more into that. First off, let's talk about lead acid, just to get it out of the way. So lead acid batteries, whether it's flooded, AGM or gel or whatever, all have the same basic limitations. You really don't want to discharge them below 50%. Just as a rule of thumb, because if you go lower, it will shorten the battery's life. They need to be kept at a high state of charge, otherwise they will start to degrade. Keeping lead acid batteries at about at least 50% state of charge, you will get around 500 to 800 cycles. But if you keep it at say 70% state of charge, and always maintaining the state of charge level, you will increase its lifetime. And if you go below 50% often, you will decrease its lifetime. All right. Another battery chemistry that's often used in solar batteries and portable power stations and power banks are the NMC chemistry, often referred to as the Li-ion chemistry, although technically most lithium batteries are Li-ion. We will focus on NMC for this video, which is nickel, manganese, cobalt, if not treated correctly, could be a pretty nasty battery chemistry. Pretty common in power stations and electric vehicles. They are a bit more sensitive than our next battery, the lithium ion phosphate, but we'll get to that. They are the most happy if kept between 20 and 80% state of charge. Let's, let's make this line green. Like that. Nice. I say between 20 and 80% because top or bottom extremes in their cycle can cause heat, stress, and shorten its lifetime. If you're thinking about 12 volt batteries, NMC comes in two standards, which is 3S and 4S, which means how many cells there are in series. Looks like a 5. Looks even more like a 5. Okay, no matter, 4S, 3S. A fully charged 3S is at 12.6 volts. Fully charged 4S is at 16.8 volts. And both these configurations will be difficult to use a battery to inverter system where you want to convert the DC power to AC power because of the inverter 
voltage range. Fully charged 4S is off, often above the rated voltage range in an in inverter. 12.8 is pretty low, which means you won't be able to use a lot of the battery. And same for 4S, you won't be able to use a lot of the battery. Pretty cool. Now let's talk about lithium iron phosphate. This is the most forgiving lithium battery chemistry of them all. You can use its full range from zero to a hundred percent. Still get thousands of cycles by doing it that way. I believe people have lithium iron phosphate confused with chemistries like NMCs. They believe you shouldn't discharge down more than to 20% or charge more than 80%, which is false. All that power is available for use. It will not destroy the battery. But if you want ultra long lifespans on lithium ion phosphate, you could be careful with its cycling. If your battery bank and loads allow for it, by keeping it above fully discharged and below fully charged all the time. But you don't need to. You can use it 100% to 0%. No problem. So, to recap, let us said NMC, often referred to as Li-ion and lithium iron phosphate. You can use 100% of a lithium iron phosphate battery, 50% of a lead acid battery, stay between 20 and 80% in an NMC chemistry battery. Also referred to as Li-ion. However, lithium iron phosphate is also a lithium ion chemistry, so technically it falls in under the same category. But it seems to be a common misconception. Anyway, what do you think? Do you agree? Leave a comment down below. For more videos like this, or even cooler, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and like this video if you found it to be interesting or helpful in any way. Watch these two videos next, because that's what, that's what YouTube is telling you to do, and I will see you in the next one.